and how to put yourself out there is by is by focusing on your on who you are. Um, so the person who write that who wrote that asked me a more specific question. Okay, I'll get to the um, Riri. Um, I can't forget him. Yeah. Okay, I'll I'll answer the engagement thing. Riri, um, can can you ask a question about? about the person you can't forget. How did I call off the engagement? I'm a big believer that the best way to receive bad news is to know that it's coming. Um, Aw, thank you. So in other words, when I was a school principal, I never fired a teacher that didn't have a clue that she was gonna get fired. So an example is I would communicate and say, hey, you know, we really got to work on some of these goals during her evaluation. Then if she didn't meet the goals or he met the goals, I would say, hey, you know, uh, if we don't meet these goals in the next six months, your job's going to be at risk. Then, of course, the job is at risk. Hey, you know, we're now at a point that your job is at risk. We've got less than a month to really figure things out. Um, so, you know, let's touch base in a, meet in a month to discuss whether this is going to work out or not. So by the time we had that meeting, they were never shocked. So um, the, the way that I called off the engagement six months before the wedding was with the same philosophy. I didn't just say to him, I wanna call off the wedding. I sat him down and I said, you know, I'm having some thoughts that I haven't had before. I am asking for you to put on your best friend hat with me um, and not my fiance hat because I need a best friend right now and, and you're my best friend. So I really want to talk to you about it. Uh, and then he's like, what, what's going on? What happened? And I said, um, and, and along the lines, and this is how I recommend, I said something like for the first time, I'm thinking after the wedding and like 20, 30, 50 years down, I'm not seeing you in my life, in my future. And I'm not sure what to do with that. And it's making me think, well, if I can't see you in my future 30 years from now, 40 years from now, 50 years from now, it's making me think, then why are we getting married? And then I said, have you had thoughts like that? He responded. Um, then my next uh, question was, I'm not sure what's happening to me, but I'm, I can tell I'm going through some changes and, uh, and I'm not sure what it is, but I do know it's not wedding jitters. And that was really important. I didn't want him to think, oh, right. I said, this is much bigger. And then I said, um, I said, and then I said to him, you know what it is? I said, I, I said, I love you. You're my best friend. You're who I talk to every day at the end of the day. I said, but I'm not in love with you. And I said, and I think we both deserve to marry someone that is in love with us. I said, you deserve to marry someone that's in love with you. I deserve to marry someone that I'm in love with and that I want them to be in love with me too, that we can reciprocate. And he was amazing. And I kept emphasizing, I need you to put on your best friend hat. I need you to wear your best friend hat. Because by reminding him that, he was able to then say, well, I want what's best for you, not what just is best for him. Does that make sense? So that's just a brief summary. I mean, it was like a two and a half hour conversation, um, but it was really exceptional. Uh, it felt like his last resort to keep me. Ooh, I love that you guys are having conversations with you guys. It's so great. I love our TikTok community. Um, how to move on. Um, did he do something or was it a disagreement? Ooh, okay, now I'm in, I want to hear too. Uh, how about having trust issues with? So I'm a big believer that if they're giving you a reason to doubt that whether they're trustworthy, trust your gut and go with your gut. Um, if they're doing something that feels sketch, looks sketch, that just is not trustworthy, don't even try to have an argument with them. Don't even try to prove them wrong. Don't even try to prove yourself wrong. If you're not feeling that you can trust them, 
that is so important in a relationship. It, it, what are you gonna do? They have to prove to you that they're trustworthy forever and ever. If you're feeling that that is not 100% on point, either A, what is it about you that's making it that you're gonna always be insecure no matter how, how much they prove to you they're trustworthy, or do you, does your partner really need to continuously prove to you that they're trustworthy, give you their phone all the time, give you the passcode? That's not sustainable. Um, the, I, I basically, my husband and I basically don't think about how we set our phones on the table, whether we're at a restaurant or home or whatever, bathroom counter. Uh, so I don't think to turn it down or not. Um, and it never occurs to me to look at his phone, is it down or up? because we trust each other. So part of it is what's going on with you that you're thinking about this. If you want, you can book a 15 minute session, one five. I think we can um, from there see if we need more. It might just be, we need a little tweak here and there. Uh, I wanna uh, kind of emotionally abusive in my, wow. Um, won't get fooled again. Um, there's two things I want to talk about that, but um, if uh, if you are feeling that you're in an emotionally abusive relationship, ask yourself, why are you willing to stay one more day? What's holding you back? Is it because you're doubting what it is? Is it because you're not sure what the definition is? It's very simple. If you're unhappy, doesn't matter what any definition is. Cell phone secrecy cl uh, clues of cheating. Um, Joelle, can you ask that more specifically? Like, um, what are they doing with the cell phone? Like, um, they always put the phone down. They um, go to another room with the phone. Tell me, can you be more specific, Joelle? Um, what services do I provide? Um, can you ask that question more specifically? I just want to ask what I want to clarify. Yeah. So, um, uh, Joelle, they walk outside. Uh, next time that happens, go walk outside with them. Uh, is it because Joelle, there was the TV was on or you were watching something? He might not want to interrupt you watching a show, but if you're willing to go outside and then he turns it around, uh, putting a uh, phone down, walking out room, etc. cetera. Um, give. So Joel, next time that he goes to the other room, just kind of make an excuse that you need to go in there also, like open the door and go, oops, sorry, I forgot I needed something in here and then walk out and see, you know, what happens. Does he sort of lose it? Um, Joel, but we can continue talking about that. Um, I really want to get a lot more details. Okay. Let's let's do that together. You started you used to be a principal.